Hey, good morning everybody. This is Anthony Thomas with BSN Collectibles, a division of Brand Shopping Network where we sell comics, cars, action figures, and much more. You can check us out at www.brandshoppingnetwork.com and shop the brands you know. Today is Saturday and today BSN presents the pure power of comic show where I will talk about a variety of products and some comic news and some info and my opinion about certain things that I think can affect the comic industry and also benefit the comic industry <clears throat> I've, been, I've been a collector for many years I'm not gonna go in how long but I've been collecting for a long time. I have 75, 76 long boxes of comics. And um, will I sell them all? I doubt it. But I got some that I collect and I keep out. And I, I will keep from my personal collection, but some I will sell. And one day I will maybe start an auction, a live auction on YouTube like all the other guys are doing. But for right now, I will be selling them on eBay as well as our e-commerce store. And I will be showcasing them on this video. But before you is a picture I showed last week on the Pure Power Comic Show of Jim Lee. The artwork that um, I won at MegaCon convention last year, um, and which was 2017, I actually won that just by having a pair of uh, fingernail clippers. <laughs> I had those in my bag that we, you know I carry a bag of, of just essentials that I need when I'm going to those conventions. Cause when I go, we spend all day, so I, and I just had you know clippers in there, and they act. Anybody got some clippers? And I, I rate, took my clippers out my bag, stand up and raise my hand with my bright orange shirt on, and uh, which had Coliseum of Comics on it, uh, which is one of my um, favorite comic shops to go check out in uh, in the local Central Florida area. Excuse me, they have like five or six locations in the Central Florida area, and Phil and, and um, them cats there are awesome people. Uh, they take care of you, and um, it's just a you know, good atmosphere to go in there and just shop and just take your time and look for comics that you want to add to your collection. Um, but yeah, I won this particular picture here, and I was just looking at um, you know uh, you know how much uh, uh, Jim Lee charges for you know uh, sketches and stuff, and is the guy worth it? Yeah, he's worth it. <laughs> he earned he earned the right. To charge that type of money he charges he's just an awesome character uh, um, um, artist uh, uh, publisher uh, entrepreneur uh, he's just you know a great guy you know I, I don't know him personally but I met him I just got to shake his hand um, uh, I'm a fan and, and and I got you know plenty of books of his work like many of you have and um, it was just a treat just to see him you know, and I know he has a busy schedule being, a, uh, you know, um, a publisher of DC Comics. And uh, I wish, you know, I don't know, I don't keep up with DC as much. I don't know if they're doing anything with his Wildstorm production characters. But it'd be cool if they did, you know, especially one particular character that he created. Uh, um, that was in Wildstorm, the leader. I forgot his name. Um, I make sure that in the... In this video, a picture of him, or I might show it in the next show. I have to dig it out. I might do that in the next show. But um, today I, I'm going to be talking about Free Comic Book Day and, and my opinion on that because I know some guys have been talking about it on some of their videos about you know the Free Comic Book Day and you know so I'm going to share my opinion what I think the comic book and I'm going to show showcase some of the free comic books I have gotten. But I want to uh, give my opinion of how the comic shops can benefit from the free comic book day. Even Comic Book Palace, uh, which I like watching his videos. I like, you know, the guy, honest opinion about uh, what he feels about the industry, what he feels about the artist, what he feels about the books, and everything like that. So I watch them whenever they come out with an episode and everything. And uh, uh, I've been a fan since I started, um, when I found out about the Comic Book Palace. 
and I like watching their um, shows when they come out when they're just talking about comics, you know, and I think anybody that's into comics that watch them, they would, they would enjoy them as well. So, without further ado, I'm going to get started with my showing. And the first showing is I'm going to talk about the cover of the week. Now, this book that I'm coming out with for the showcase is basically the New Avengers. And I showed the New Avengers last week. This one here is with Sentry on it. And it's Avengers number three. And it, and, and basically in this uh, particular book, it was the worst Avengers history. The scholar, scholar which suffered a total nervous breakdown after losing control of her real, reality altering, altering powers. In the chaos created around the breakdown, many of the other Avengers were killed or hurt both emotionally and physically without funding. I'm reading from the, you know, the uh, cover just to look, tell you what's going on in this book. Without funding to keep going, the rest of the team quietly, quietly disbanded. And um, today, they're showing a picture of, you know, the chaos. This is a good book to get. The criminal Electro is hired to infiltrate the high-tech maximum, maximum security prison known as the Raft. He sucks all the power out, out of Manhattan and overloads the entire island security system, setting free 87 of the most dangerous and powerful criminal, criminals on Earth. Who hired Electro to do this and who helped escape is a mystery. Trapped on the prison island are S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Jessica Drew, a.k.a. Spider Woman, blind lawyer Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, Murdoch's, Mur Murdoch's partner, Foggy Nelson, and Luke Cage, hero for hire. They came, or they, they have come to see the most powerful superhero in the world, the Sentry, who is rotting in the in a solitary basement cell because he killed his wife. When the city goes black, Captain America is already in the black ops shield copter heading towards the island. <clears throat> he does not realize that Spider-Man has also hitched a ride. They are joined by the invisible, invincible, not invisible, but invincible Iron Man. And the battle seems to be going. The heroes wait until Purple Man called Kilgraven, with his mind controlling power confronts his oldest enemy Luke Cage and if you know um, if you watch the Jessica Jones series on Netflix you know, uh, uh, Purple Man or Kilgraven he's on there and his powers he can you know pretty much control anybody he can tell you to you know try to fly to the moon or jump off the Empire State Building well I will not say Empire State he'll try to tell you to jump off a building and you would do it basically or he, if he asks you you know whatever go rob a bank and you'll go do it he has he can control your mind but in this particular issue which I you know read and uh, basically it's about you know this in this particular issue, the superheroes are fighting. They actually, you know, going to the island and they trying to get the uh, prisoners secured and under control and everything. But the Purple Man, he's he's telling all of them to run a muck and do all this chaos crap. And I guess you know while the prisoner was there, Purple Man was drugged like all the prisoners so he wasn't at his full potential power potential so he he was I guess to the weak mind that he was able to control it but he told he told um Luke Cage to do something and then when Luke Cage he's I'm gonna I'm show you a scene I'm gonna show you a scene from the magazine I'm gonna show you why. It's also not only my favorite cover, but one of my favorite books, also that I read. Just you know, just a a good action prison book. And then in this book, Captain America recruits his new team. And here, let me show. Let me just zoom. 
you know, here in this scene here, um, Purple Man or Kill Grey, you know, whatever you want to call him, Kill Grey, rather, do, he, he, he asks Luke Cage, do me a favor, kill all those other hero friends of yours and then kill yourself. I know that God loves me. You know, Luke Cage is looking at him. And in the next panel, I know that God loves me. This, me. This is how I know. I finally am showing a way out of this hellish prison. And you are there to greet me. I know God wants this to happen. And I don't believe. I don't even believe in God. And then Luke Cage's eyes get. You know, I get wide at it, and you know, because I guess Luke Cage looks, in, he's looking at him in this scene here. Then he turns around in the next scene, and then he, in the next scene, his eyes get refocused. <laughs> and, and, and Kilgrave is still talking to him, and he said, I promise you this I promise I would take care, take very good care of our darling. Jessica Jones and your bastard baby child she is Karen and then <laughs> uh, uh, Luke Cage sweating he said he, he calls that Kill Graves name he said Kill Grave and, he's, and Kill Grave says oh purple man yes Mr. Cage Luke Cage says to Kill Grave your power your powers your mind control they drug you all to hell when they lock you in here your powers don't work right now in this scene here so he says your powers your mind don't work they drug you all the hell when they lock you in here and then Kilgrave eyes got wide and that's when Kilgrave wish he was on another planet Cause Luke Cage started beating the hell out of him, <laughs> and and you know, I ain't gonna show the whole book cause I don't want you, to, you know, to give everything away. But somebody stopped him. But this is the cover of the week, the book of the week, and this 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 inside it. I like this cover of Century, but there's a, the picture inside that's even better looking. I mean, I like, I'm going to show you the picture inside. I like this here. This picture here. That is a nice picture. Let's show him actually floating or, you know, in, in, in the sky. Hair blowing in the wind. I wish Marvel would take this character and take him to the level of the, and make him as pop popular as Superman and he's a good character to do that with whether he was back in the 90s or the 60s who cares he's a good character he's a good creation run with him make him you know you know I mean cause he's in that caliber as for strength and all that of Superman run with this this guy and just make him as popular as Superman that's my opinion Trying to get this back in. Let me let me get this back in this board. Where I messed my book up. There we go. So and let me zoom that back in. That is the cover of the week. The cover of the week. Is Avengers new the new Avengers number three? Michael Bennis is the writer. David Finch is the artist, whom I met twice at the MegaCon convention. I met, like I said before, I met his wife, met him at the MegaCon convention in Orlando, Florida, and. They may, or he might be back there this year. And if he is, I would bring some more books to get signed from him. I got tons of books signed. So, 
I mean, I could show books all year long and still not show you all the books I got signed. So, um, this is the uh, book of the um, week. Now, or the cover of the week. Now I'm going to show you the signed book of the week. I, well, let me just talk about, you know, the reason why I like the cover before I go to the next one. I'm an artist, and I like the layout. I like the, you know, the star scenery in the back space. You got the planets and everything like that. I like the uh, the um, the great use of shading he did in, in the character itself. You know, um, I think that's awesome the way he did that. And also making the century a logo, just glow in the dark, basically, you know. It makes him look powerful. Now, one thing I did, I guess he probably maybe did the short hair for the logo's sake. You know, because in the comics, he got longer hair inside the book. So I'm assuming that he did the short hair, the short hair version of him <clears throat> because of the the logo, the new Avengers. Because if he did the long hair, it probably had to be wavy and flowing or whatever. And it, <clears throat> it would have covered up some of the uh, the new Avengers logo, especially with this design. Or he would have had to make the character smaller, and uh, you know, underneath the uh, logo more. But the way he got the character now, I like it. It's it, like he's coming right at you, you know, and uh, he's meaning business. So David Finch is the artist. Mike Bendis is the writer of this book. cover up the next one is sign book this is a uh, book that got signed by George Perez and I know he is dealing with some illness and I hope I haven't heard the latest news but I hope he is doing better I pray that he's doing better you know physically oh, you know I Pray that God is giving him strength to heal fast, whatever he may be going through. But this next book, I think we all will all will agree, is something that we wanted to happen, and um, they was talking about making it happen, and it finally happened. And when it happened, we we could I believe we all can believe. We could all believe or all can say that George Perez knocked it out the park. Not only with artwork, you know, with um with the writing, Kirk Busek, you know, uh George Perez is the artist, Tom Smith, colorist and separator, comic craft is the lettering. And this is um You know, uh, uh, Avengers and a JL, a JLA, and Avengers crossover. And this is Marvel and DC. And this is issue number one. And not only did George Perez do the cover, he did the inside as well. And this guy is just awesome, man. He is just. If anybody says anything bad about George Perez, they just need to get out the uh, uh, get out the industry and go somewhere else and collect stamps or something. Cause this guy is just totally awesome. I mean, he sets the standard. He is the standard, not only in his his drawing, but his detailing of uh, the backgrounds. You know, the characters, the motions in the uh, faces and everything like that. I mean, you know, he's just he's just an A+. Plus. He's an A-plus artist. He's the top of the game. You know how you have the, in, in, in the, um, 
in the movie industry, you know, you got the B movies, which everybody call, which I call D and C movies. But uh, um, this this guy is just a no matter what he's working on. If he's working on Teen Titans, he working on uh, whatever. He just knocks it out of the park. And this book here, here, this is, I got this signed by him, and I donated some money. You know, to the um, uh, the artist, you know, comic book foundation. You know, I forgot the actual name of that. Forgive me for not knowing the name of it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, I donated some money for that, and he signed a whole. He signed all the books I brought. He said, "Hey, I donated. I think I donated like ten dollars or something like that." And he signed all the books. He said, "Hey, you just stack them up there, and I'll sign them." And everything like that, and hitting out, and he did. And um, on this one, though, I didn't get it. I want to get um, a certificate of authenticity. And at the show, they either they didn't. I don't think they had someone doing it there at the time. And I, and they might. And, and I, at least I couldn't find them. And and, and I was looking. So, um, but I like this book. I like the story. And I like. And this is something that you know, oh man, it was hinting back, you know, back in the day, man. Wouldn't it be cool to have the Avengers and JLA do a crossover? And this is something that was hinted and talked about, and it finally happened. And when it did happen, um, um, George Perez he got the green light, and he did a four-part story, and he knocked it out the park. He knocked it out the park. I like the uh, cover. The only thing as an artist is that I have an issue with, which I might be wrong about this, is the height of each character. Now, I mean, they show in cap. I, I understand. I don't, you know, I know Thor's a, a tall dude. I know Superman is pretty tall, but I don't think Batman is taller than Superman. And saying that with Iron Man, that's the only thing, unless you know. That's the only thing that got me, but I still love the cover. I still love it. I just love the artwork. And if you don't have this in your collection, go out and get it. Get the all one and one through four. Get all one through four. And then just read it. Don't just buy it just for or, or to get it uh, um, slabbed in the way you can sell it. No, actually read the damn comic and enjoy the storyline. I mean, just read it. That's, and that's one thing I probably do on this video, on this particular show, is that I'm going to maybe do some reading. You know, just, you know, actually read the book and then um, share it with you um, what's going on in the story. You know, so that may, maybe I'll do that next week, starting next week. But, I mean, this is definitely a good read. This is definitely a good one. You because, know, I mean, I'm watching the other videos where guys are going out and they're buying their new books and they're getting them slabbed and all this kind of stuff because they want to be able to sell them at a higher price, which is fine, you know. I mean, you know, if that's something, you know, you want to you wanna, uh, do, that, you know, if that's something you want to do as an investment, but to me... I guess the comic book uh, um, publishers don't care as long as they're making a sale. And I guess uh, CGC don't care neither as long as they're making a sale. And I I'm, I know I was watching this one vi um, video, this one guy, on, on, where he was talking about how they're going out and they, uh, these, they come out with these new books and they go get them slabbed and everything like that because they, you know, they're going to turn around, they're going to spend 25 or 30 bucks to get a slab on a $3 book and then they're going to turn around, maybe sell it, make, you know, make 40 bucks or whatever off the slab and everything like that or or 50 bucks or you know is it worth it I hey to that this new generation it is worth it you know because this is like a little you know f you know like you know you buy that book and you turn around and make a little investment in it and you flip it so like flipping houses and stuff, you know, that's how I, that's what that's what kind of CG getting your books loud, you know, sounds to me like, hey, you know, I'm buying this book. I'm going to get it slab. I ain't going to read it and I may read it, you know, I, and, but I'm going I'm, to I like the cover 
You know, I like what's going on in with it, so I'm gonna turn around and get it slapped, and then I'm gonna flip it and stuff. So you buy, and I like, you know, you buy a house and you fix it up and you flip it, and that's what, you know, that's the mentality I guess the guy is seeing in his, um, in his video. I'm not gonna point him out. He's a nice. I think he, I like his videos and I like his opinion, but I, and I like his opinion about that. But this is my opinion. I get why the guys are doing what they're doing. I get the fact that, hey, okay, I'm going to buy this new book and I'm going to turn around, get a slab and flip it, you know. That is, so I'm going to flip it for a little bit more money. So, and then with that little bit money, I invest in some other books that I don't buy, turn around, get them slab and flip it. Do I got any uh, CGC uh, books? No. Will I get some in the future? Maybe. Who knows? I was thinking about that because of Reggie Simmons. And Reggie collects. He talks about that, and I watch his videos all the time. And Reggie, um, <clears throat> if you're listening, or if you watch this video, you know we ain't listening now because this is a pre-recorded. But if you you watch this video, I'm giving you shout outs. I like your videos, and, and we don't text before. I text to you before, and I ask you if you ever come to Orlando, Florida, I'd like to meet you at the MegaCon. If you ever, I'll make it this way, you know, one year. But he seem like a cool guy. But like I was saying before, on the um, um, you know the um, collect, you know the CG uh, C uh, bag and boarding. Like I said, I think I get why the guys are doing it. I understand it, and you know I ain't gonna say that's the new generation or nothing like that. I ain't got nothing with new generation. That's just that's just uh, uh, the mindset of the the side of that industry that's one side of that of the industry we're in you know some people collect the buy the books to read and to collect and then you got some people who buy books to maybe read then and, and, and um back and, and um get them cgc'd and everything like that to flip you know Cause you got some guys that they're buying three or four copies in, in uh, of one book, and and, and I I don't did that cause I got the number one um and I'm gonna dig that out uh, and show that in one of my videos. I got the number one um the giant size X Men. I got five copies of those and everything. I'll show that. Now that's something I th I'm thinking about doing cause I was talking to Reggie about that and I said I may do it uh, and I, somebody want to buy one and all that. I may do that, but, you know, and I may not, <laughs> but right now I'm not, you know, so, but, um, but I get it. I get why they're doing it. I get why people are back, you know, buying the new books or buying some old books and, and I can get the old books now. The old books, I understand because you're going to, if it's a key issue or if it's a key a issue that's worth something without being uh, CGC, and then you get a CGC, and it's worth even more. Like the number one Avenger, uh, uh, X Men with, with uh, Wolverine and Colossus and all them on the front cover. I get that, and I, you know, uh, and I get that with the first appearance of Punisher. You know, all that I get that on the uh, Spider Man book. I, you know, <clears throat> and the first appearance of Wolverine. I, I get all of that kind of stuff. You know, but the books that's coming out. You know, ah. Uh, Okay, I mean, it just I can go in the store and buy that right now at cover price. Somebody done bought it and they don't send it to CGC, and CGC gonna give them a nine point and all that kind of stuff. And and I get what the guy was saying in his video is that CGC ain't gonna give them no lower grade. CGC ain't gonna give them no six point or, or seven point whatever. And you know, and some of the number uh, um, ratings I get, uh, and some of it I don't, but. But when you see somebody that uh, um, that's constantly getting nine point eight, and then they get upset and they want to fight because they don't got an eight or something like that, or, or a seven, and then they want to kick down the whole building, you know, I, you know, it just seems okay. It's a different book to uh, you may get some money out of it, you may not, depending on the storyline. I'm not gonna buy a book because I'm not. I personally ain't gonna buy a book. Just cause you got it in some hard plastic, it's got to be a book that I want to get because of the story, of the uh, uh, the character, of the artwork, 
Not because it's in some hard plastic. That's just my opinion. And but some people think because they got it in hard plastic, they don't got it graded and everything by a company that's <laughs> like the one guy. Well, I am not gonna say his name. He said that. Uh, um, oh God, what's the one of the main grading company? Mine all went blank for a second there. Uh, the main grading company uh, that did the grading. Hold on one sec. Let let me go. Let me pull this up. I'm back. And yeah, my wife talking to me. She said, oh, oh, you coming out here making noise? I said, no, I'm not coming out making noise. Because she, she's doing a podcast. She does podcasting. And I'm doing a video right now. So, But Overstreet, that's who I'm talking about. Overstreet. Wasn't Overstreet the leader in pricing? Huh? Wasn't Overstreet the leading? What not cats? Okay, so this is the... Uh, Love this book and everything like that. Uh, um, buy it. Buy one through four. Read the book. And if you want to get a CGC, that's up to you. But actually enjoy the storyline. Uh, Greg White's comic books and collectibles. He That was his big, big, big beef. You know, a lot of, he said, all these young guys coming out, all these people that are coming in the comic industry, not just young, but... Uh, um, they're just buying books, but they're not actually reading the books. They're not enjoying the storyline. And that's part of, uh, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say part of it, but it might be part of it. You know, people are just buying to collect, but are they buying to enjoy? And that's what he was saying. Are they buying, getting into the industry to enjoy the storylines and everything like that? I remember me and my guys back in the day, we used to buy books, read the stories, know about all the characters. You talk about the characters, their powers and the storylines and everything like that. And I'm, saying, I'm not saying everybody is like that. Not everybody does that. But, you know, just if you watch a lot of the YouTube videos that's coming out now, a lot of people are just talking about, you know, uh, the CGC. But my thing is, do you? And if the CGC is you, then more power to you. But my th and, and the guy was pointing out, what I want to show you is the guy was pointing out, wasn't Overstreet, <laughs> wasn't they the leader in the pricing? You know, this is one of the books I bought, the price guy, that I, I you know, I look up prices and stuff on my books. I go to I go to them, you know, uh, and uh, I gotta get the newest one. Uh, I go to them for my pricing, over street, over street comic book price guide, and uh, you can they, they got an online store you can do as well. So, book of the week, cover of the week, the new Avengers with Century, and the book of the week, a sign book. Sign book, autograph book of the week. JLL, JLA, and Avengers, Busek and Perez. Now, which is my favorite team? <laughs> By far, the Avengers. 
I mean, just Avengers, you know. I mean, these guys here, those three, it's a great movie she did. Batman, uh, Michael Keaton loves him and Michael Keaton Superman movie. Oh, God, let me see what Superman movie did I kind of like. Hmm. Oh, uh, the guy who passed away. Ah, oh, man. That was the older uh, TV shows. Yeah, I think he did the movies, too. And he ended up hurting himself. And y'all know who I'm talking about. Oh, God, man. So. <clears throat> I think he hurt himself on a horse or something like that. But you know who I'm talking about. Those were good uh, uh, TV shows as well as movies and stuff. The actual movies with the other cats, I could take them or leave them. All right. But if you want to price your books, get that there. Now, up next, I'm going to showcase the graphic novel and... This next one is, uh, like I've been doing a little, um, Stanley tribute, showcasing, and, and just imagine, I know I'm talking right from the camera, I've been doing a Stanley tribute with just imagine, uh, and you got Adam Hughes, and you got Kevin McGuire, So here you got and got Stanley just imagine Stanley doing the flash. I'm gonna have to say on this flash one, uh I don't like the costume. I haven't read the book. Maybe I might like the storyline, but I don't. I, I haven't read the book, um, and I'll read the book and share that with you in down in you know this year, <clears throat> and give my opinion of what I think of it. But um, I'm just doing this because of Stan Lee. He's you know he's one of the greatest. Oh man, I got to meet him at MegaCon and everything and. I didn't get a chance to get an autograph. I wanted to get an autograph, but I didn't get a chance because the line was beaucoup long. Uh, and I, I said, man, if I wait in that line, I'll be here. That was probably about a two or three hour wait, just standing in line with him. And that's, you know, that's a lot of time of the day. But like you said, now I wish I would have did that standing in line because he's not here. But I get, I did get to um, meet him at a panel and everything that he did and everything like that. But, you know, when you meet him there, you can't, you know, hey, will you sign this book while you're talking? <laughs> it don't work like that. But as far as his character is concerned that he created, the Flash, uh, an all-white suit, I mean, I just, and what, you know, I just don't... It, <laughs> I'm just looking at, you know, I would say the one, I don't know if he had any input in the suit creation, the design of the new character, but I would think he he would. Uh, um, and like what I showed with Wonder Woman and when I showed with Green Lantern, you know, I like Wonder Woman. He knocked that part with Wonder Woman. She was, I mean, she had the best design suit. Wonder Woman. Green Lantern, it was okay. He looked like the Watcher, but green. And then he had the symbol of the Lantern in his, his suit, in his costume, or, or what it, when his costume looked like a butt naked and just green. Uh, and But on the back, Adam Hughes, you know, that's his, his version, his painted version. And this one here. I can appreciate, I mean, this 
Okay, you tell me which one do you like better? You like that? You know the layout of the cupboard and everything, or do you like this one? I mean, uh, just take away, you know, the realistic painting and all that kind of stuff. I'm still not feeling that white suit, dude. Adam Hughes painted, I'm still not feeling. So, this is one of my least favorite designs. One of them, anyway. Well, I take that back. It's the other ones I'm going to show. Uh... But I like I like Wonder Woman number one so far. Green Lantern, he's not number two. I think he's probably like number three or four. This one here is a number uh six or seven out of that series. So but I like it because I bought it because Stan Lee. Stan the man Lee was involved with it and he crossed over he crossed over to to uh, DC see that's what they're showing there that I guess when she's running she's got those things behind her and everything like that what do we call them things I don't know and I'm assuming that's what they're supposed to be there I look like ribbons or something like crap to me. So. But just because Stan Lee crossed over to the DC, that was a big deal. And that was actually adding value to comics. <laughs> too, with uh, how, how comic book uh, uh, um, publisher adding value. This is another series. Even though this is, I'm doing this tribute to uh, Stan Lee, because I'm going to do this all year. I'm going to, um, you know, just. You know, just show some books that I like that Stanley uh, uh, got involved in, you know, and everything. I mean, because, I mean, he created Marvel, but, you know, I'm going to particularly pull out a book that I know Stanley has some input in besides just putting his name on the page. Um, I mean, this right here. Just you know, just this is added value to comics because when it, when this came out, they would say, "Oh man, Stanley, he's going over to to uh, um, the competitor to help them out with characters." But I don't think anybody from DC, none of the big wigs over there, came to Marvel and did anything. But see, they don't have that uh, DC. They don't have that that um, unless you think. Uh, uh, Dan or uh, with uh, Jim Lee, uh, if he's kind of like the face of uh, DC, but if he's just a writer, I don't know. He's a publisher, but I don't know if he's considered the Stan Lee of uh, DC. But because um, they don't have his name on the books like they do with Stan Lee on, on Marvel books, so but I still. Add this to my collection. I still will read it, and hopefully, I will get, I will enjoy it when I read it. If you enjoy this book, this series, please leave a comment. Let me know. Say, hey, man, it's a good book, or hey, man, uh, it's okay. But even, even if I, even if I, I wouldn't say not enjoy it. I'm still going to enjoy it because. One of the greats did it, man. He was involved in. Just a sin. I'm gonna put this back into the uh, plastic. I mean, one of the greats did it, and he was involved in it. Without him, without Stanley, man, just think about it. With without Stanley, without his wife, without his wife, man. Let's let's really dig deep in this. Cause I, like I told you, I like to talk. Just without his wife being involved, and in, when Stan, she told Stan Lee go, and when he was getting ready to quit, you know, the um, the comic industry, she said go do the book you want to do. Without his wife giving him that encouragement, a good lady, a you know, a, a by his side, 
not behind him, but by his side, telling him, hey, go do that book you want to do. Go do that book. This industry wouldn't be where it's at if it wasn't for her encouraging her man to do his thing. And I tip my hat and I salute her for what she did. And I think every comic book collector, collector out there should do that, whether you're an independent publisher or not. Because without Marvel, hey, there would be no uh, none of this. I mean, look at the in, look at the, the movie industry. Look at the um, the gaming industry. Look at all this going because of one man vision. You know, and and I I know you know Jack Kirby and all the artists had some play in that and everything. I know I get that. You know, and I know Jack Kirby had a great impact on the comic industry him, himself. And I will be you know talking about him. I will probably show some artwork of him because I want to I want to do some artwork of his stuff that I, you know he just did. But uh, uh um, just you know, but Stan Lee, I'm talking about Stan the Man Lee. You know, true believers, you know, all that, etc., and all that kind of stuff. Without him, without his wife encouraging him, none of this stuff would have happened the way it did. And uh, it would have been a whole playing field. Because, I mean, DC Comics at the time, I ain't telling you, I was not into DC at all. I mean, you know, the good boy, too, uh, um, the corny um, uh, Batman stories and all that kind of stuff, I wasn't happening. And everything like that. So, you know, <clears throat> Stanley, he brung life to comics. To, in my opinion, he brung, brung character to comics. He, I mean, you look at uh, Spider Man. You look at all of them. Uh, Captain America. You look at Hulk. All of the emotions and the, you know, different levels of uh, um, of, <clears throat> of uh, you know, just designs and and. Uh, if you look at Hulk, you know what, okay, this cat is dealing with that. And you look at Spider-Man, you know he's dealing with that. It's it's not, okay, he's a god or something like that because he had these powers. No, nah, he's a regular dude just dealing with something, even though he has these powers. And he, but he's still dealing with life. He's still human. Even though he's superhuman, he's still dealing, he ha still have problems. He still have issues and stuff like that in his life. I mean, uh, even with the new storyline with Hulk, man, just imagine if you if you were the Hulk, would you want to deal, be dealing with that crap, getting shot every night or shot all the time, and then you, you die and you wake up and everything like that? No. And that's something that Bruce Banner is dealing with. I mean, that's just, and that's a great storyline. I mean, and, 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 and um, just with you know when Stan Lee brung Hulk out and he was just you know, uh, 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 you know changing into the Hulk and his whole life changed. Dude. I mean his whole life changed. I mean I couldn't, you know nobody could fathom trying to deal with that. You your life would be changed forever. You could never have a normal life. You could never have that picket fence. You could never have a woman in your life full time, and, and then you're you're turning into the Hulk, and you're tearing up everything, and you're jumping around the world, and all that kind of. You and wake up in the morning, you have the city destroyed because of what you don't did. Nah, <clears throat> nobody could fathom that. You know, nobody could deal with that. But that's just great writing. That's just great creating, and that's with Stan Lee back in the day, and that was you know. Uh, uh, Jack Kirby and all them cats coming up with these characters design. It was just totally awesome, man. So I salute not only Stanley, but I salute his wife for what she did to encourage him to write that story the way you wanted it done. And he did that. And without her telling him, now what if, she, and that's a what if, what if his wife said, move on, get into advertising, get into something else? Think about that for a minute. What if his wife would have told him, move on, don't worry about doing that. Don't worry about doing that comic book stuff. Go on to do something else, baby. What if she would have told him that? Think about it. This book here would disappear. Think about it. All the books you got in your, your bin of Marvel would disappear. Would never exist. Just think about that for a minute and let that sink in. What if Stan Lee's wife did not tell him to write that last story 
And if it doesn't work, at least you got it out your system. What if she would have told him to move on and just go do something else? Just let that sink in and think about it for a minute. Every book you got a marvel would cease to exist. It would never happen. It would have never happened. Just think about that for a minute. Let that sink in. And you will say, wow. Wow. And that we, we, that's something we can learn, too. I mean, from just from what, what she did, how she encouraged her man to do his thing, we should be encouraging one another, especially the loved ones in our life when they're trying to do something. Just say, hey, do it. Now, I mean, something crazy now, you know, like, you know, hey, going to rob a bank, something like that. That's something different. <laughs> but if you, she's telling you to do something positive, or she, he's telling you to do something positive, just say, hey, go ahead and do it. Like, I told my wife, my, I said, my wife, my wife loves to talk. She, she's, she's in college. She's a smart lady. She is my friend. She is uh, the love of my life. We've been we we dated from high school. We've been married over twenty something years, over twenty five years. We got married in nineteen ninety, and I told her, "Do you? Do you? You like podcasting? Do it. You like blogging? All that stuff? Do it. Here, here's the equipment. Do it. You know. And when I say here's equipment, you know, new camera, new uh." uh Computers, all that stuff. Because, hey, we're here for one another. I don't want to get into that part of it anyway. But I just want to pull over that on that side of it just to say, hey, what Stan Lee wife did for him, you do it for your lady or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or what whomever you have in your life. Encourage each other in a positive way. And, wow, you can maybe affect somebody even a small way but Stan Lee wife infected her husband in a very big way cause he built an empire around just one word she, uh, you know, or two words or three words she encouraged him to do just think about that too just because what she said he built an empire from that alright next one up is the graphic novel of the week and it's from Marvel and I like this I like this storyline and and um, like I said I'm, I'm long-winded I mean I talk about hey I could me and my wife will we'll sit back and we'll it'd be like I gotta go to work I gotta wake up five o'clock in the morning and it's 12 o'clock at night, we'll sit there and talk in the bed about, you know, what we're trying, what we're doing and everything like that. Because we just like to talk. She's my best friend. And we just like to talk. Okay, this next one is Marvel Finest. And it's got a little damage in the back. Uh, and, I, and I knew that when I bought it. But. And I bought it for, I bought it at Coliseum of Comics, and I bought it for six bucks at the time. But I bought it anyway, because Jim Lee was the artist in this. And at the time, and this came out in 19, uh, let me see, this came out in 19... Nineteen ninety six, ninety seven, and two thousand. This is a graphic novel of books. It came out during that time. The artwork is awesome. This is a picture, picture here, that I may draw. I'm a copycat artist, dude. And and when I say copycat, I might not. I ain't gonna trace it, but I'm gonna draw that picture there of Human Touch. Jim Lee drew that. And I think I'm gonna draw that. Now, 
back in the day when I got an art, yeah, I wanted to become a comic book artist and everything like that. I wanted to get in the comic industry. But, you know, hey, sometimes that's not the card. But I'm in the industry in some form or way. I'm showcasing books. I got books I'm selling. And I'm also an artist. I'm also drawing uh, 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 um, I have projects to draw different large projects posters and, and not posters but pictures of comics for uh, um, for clients and stuff but this here is Jim Lee plotted and pencil Brandon Chow script Scott Lee you know uh, um, Scott Williams rather you know he's his anchor now Scott William Alex Garner and Tom McWee Weenie, you know, they did inks. Joe Joe Chadu, Mart. I'm gonna go with Martin J with Wildstorm FX Colors, Richard Stark and Comic Craps. You know, they did lettering and and um, Jim Lee and Scott Williams did the cover of this particular book. And this is a great storyline of Heroes Reborn. Together they are, are the Fantastic Four, the world's greatest superhero team now. Legendary artist Jim Lee brings a bold new look and a raw uh, vitality to the America to America's most popular heroes. Witness the Fantastic Four astonishing origin and amid a hail of cosmic rays. Feast your eyes on an astonishing array of villains and and and, and arsenals up upon uh, arsenals of high tech weapon weaponry. Feel the heat of of the F F blistering battles against the dreaded Doctor Doom and hear the Earth tremble as they clash at the last. At, at, or, the Earth tremor as they clash at last with the cosmic powered super scroll. And this is the Heroes Reborn series. Heroes Reborn series. Don't. I'm putting it back in the plastic. And this is my graphic novel of the week, week, week. You know, there's some people can draw a thing, and some people can't. Oh, hold on a second. Got to, uh, let me plug up this camera. Well, I'm running out of power, and I don't want to shoot this video over again. Still got a lot more to show. There we go. Got my coffee. This mug here. It keeps the coffee hot. My wife bought this offline for me. She bought me two of them. It keeps the coffee hot for at least four to five hours. But on what you're looking at is uh, Marvel's Finest, Fantastic Four, Heroes Reborn. Get it. Get the series. I actually got the uh, um, regular series, comic series on this, as well as the graphic novel. I got two of these books here. Great series. Great artwork. And you know, I always said this here. This is how com the comic industry brought uh, um, life back into the comic books by stuff like this here. You know, uh, Jim Lee. At the time, he um, you know he went to Image Comics. He came back. He was doing stuff for Marvel, 
and everything like that. So that brought more fire back. So you know, into the, you know, the collect industry, people buying it because hey, like like Jim Lee, these are the boys that left Marvel and DC, and uh, they they got started Image, but now they're back and they're doing some work for them. So yeah, you know, you jump on board, you buy the books, you you know, everything like that. And I'm the type of person that I would buy and read and sit back. And I like to read when it's raining, you know, have the windows popped up, pop open or out on the porch, whatnot, you know, uh, and just, you know, just got my book stacked up and I'm just sitting there reading with I'm drinking some a nice hot cup of coffee. And uh, um, this is a good read, good artwork. And you can just, you know, I'm going to read this here. I think I'll probably read that one there and also just tell you you know uh and break it down what's going on and each story and i might be a four-day process you know depending on how many stories in there i think it's four books in that book and uh, um just break it down like that and just uh, instead of reading the whole thing and try to break it down at um and um break it down in sections and stuff like that but that's definitely the graphic novel of the week so, I mean, you know, you, and, oh, what I was saying about the thing, thing, yeah. I mean, I love the way Jim Lee does the thing. I mean, who, you know, you some cats, they they can draw. Thing is, to me, is a hard character to get right. I mean, because he basically, he's, you know, he's a big pile of rocks. Basically, the thing character is basically a big pile of rocks with... You know, human. You know, uh, you know, he's a human figure. He's a human. Just got turned into uh, that stone character, and he's actually made of stone. Now, what type of stone? That's a whole nother story. But he's made us. You know, he's hard rock and everything like that. But he's a hard character to make him look right. Cause I don't see a bunch of artists that draw him and. Uh, they missed the mark, uh, you know, his head is not big enough, his body is too small. I mean, you know, you're making a thing just as small as uh, the human torch. But I say, thing is a huge dude, man. I mean, he's uh, he's like, almost, he's not big as Hulk, but he's not, um, just a little smaller than the Hulk. But he used to be towering over the rest of, of the crew, you know, not... Like in that the movie that uh, um, they did with the first Fantastic Four, this dude wasn't big as you know. I'm saying, oh, man, this, this is a thing, <laughs> and I, I was disappointed. <laughs> this ain't the thing, but that's a whole nother story there. But I like this the way he got this thing here looking. You know, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, Reed Richards, hey. Ben Graham, yeah. you knocked it out of the park there. Uh, I like the layout too. You know, the layout where you got <laughs> stretch in the back, you know, and the, you know, some people would put, you know, the thing in the back and say have him back because he's the biggest character, but then you would have to do the whole layout different. But since uh, um, Reed Richards can stretch, uh, I, I like the way he put him behind him, stretching over him, and then you got the human torch coming in between them and everything, and you got, you know, the visible girl right up front, you know, she's not going to be in the back, no, no, you're going to have the lady in front where you can see what's going on, make sure she's protected, she's not behind you, she's in front of you, or she's beside you, but she's not going to be behind you, she's going to be in front or beside you. And this case here, I would say that she either is the way I'm looking at it. She can be considered in front or she can be beside the thing. But she's definitely not in the back. She's not behind Reed Richards. She's not behind the human torch. And I like that. The lady should always be either beside or in the front. So, and that was a good, that's a good layout. Good layout. All right, up next we have, we have, let's, let's talk about, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, uh, I, 
could do the um the unboxing of books or I gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Let's do this here. My cards of the comic book cards of the week. Okay, we got let's do the com up next is comic book cards of the week. I could show one, but I'm gonna show five. And, and let's just move these here because that's put that there. This is Lady Death, Chaos Comics. And this is basically from Wizard Magazine, number seven. And bought and uh Real name Hope Height. Gentlemen don't ask that question. What do you mean, general? I just, uh, weight, I thought it was the one they don't ask. You risk, uh, weight, you risk your life with questions like that. Eye color, yeah, right. Uh, date of birth, you'll learn when the end comes. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and, and here you got Evil Ernie sitting in the back. With the pumpkin. Eva Ernie sitting there. That's Eva Ernie there. Uh, it's a nice car. I think that was a great character they came up with. I don't know how the character's doing now. Um. Uh, then you got Craven, Ken Kelly. He does Craven, and this is a Flare Ultra. Well, well, let me well, hold on a second. Let me. This car came out with Lady Death. This came out in 1996 from Chaos Comics. He's got Pat and all that kind of stuff. Certain numbers on it. Brian put. Uh, Paula D or Paula Du, uh, Lady Lady Death creator and writer, and I think the black guy was Hodges. Uh, uh, I think he was the the um because there was a right uh, uh the white dude was uh Brian and I met him at comic um MegaCon and Hughes. I think he died. The black guy, I think he died. He was the artist for Lady Death, and I like his style of artwork, and they pretty much. Uh, Chaos Comics pretty much did like horror comics and stuff, and they do car. I don't know if they still do, but I'm pretty sure they still do Lady Death and everything like that. It was one of their biggest characters besides Evil Ernie. I think they would make a great movie. <laughs> but yeah, great card, great character. Craven. This is a Flare Ultra, Spider-Man, Golden Web, King Kelly is the artist on this, Craven the Hunter. This card came out, this was uh, 1995 Marvel. Limited edition, four of nine. And here we have a DC and Wizard number 12, Batman versus Wildcat. Hold on a sec. Yeah. This is, let me show you. This is one of them cut at cards. And they both got on spiky gloves. 
Is somebody about to get hurt in this one here? This was um, 1996 DC Comics comic card. You know, you got the blue, in the blue corner Batman, real name Bruce Wayne, height 6'2", weight 210, reach 82, hometown Gotham, and the red corner Wildcat, you know, real name Ted Grant, height 6'5", he bigger than, he bigger than Batman and heavier. Weight 250 and reach 885, hometown New York. And here I have some hologram. A Batman and Robin. It came in 1996 DC Skybox Flare Skybox card. Another hologram card. This is Batman and the Joker. Nineteen ninety six Skybox Duel with a dual personality. <laughs> Talking about the Joker. And up next I'm going to talk about da da Talk about this here. Let me zoom back in. And what I'm showcasing here is I'm gonna give you my opinion on free comic book day. Now the only free comics I got I got from um Coliseum Comics over the years. I got tons of them back there. But I didn't realize that they had to pay for those free comics. When you say, oh, free comic books, okay, so the publishers are giving um, the retail shop, the comic retail shops, free comics to get out, give out to their readers. And from Comic Book Palace to, um, well, let me see, other oh, guy name. I'm looking at my phone. Com um, comic Book Palace as well as Arkham Comics and I'm pretty sure it's other people at Coliseum Com I mean not, not Coliseum Com but Comic Book Palace and Arkham Comics on YouTube you know and I'm pretty sure it was other people talking about this Pretty sure other people are talking about this um, thing of um, you know the the retail stores giving out comic the free comics and I didn't realize just by listening to those guys Comic Book Palace and Arkham Comics that you know the con those retail shops have to pay for those books whether they're a dollar, 50 cent, 25 cent, whatever. I don't know how, how much they actually pay. I think they said, but I don't forgot. <clears throat> they have to pay for those books to give out to the public for free just to, um, you know, just to... They buy them from the publisher to give out to free to promote those books that are coming out from those publishers and everything like that and, and you know and you know they just you know as and I'm guilty of that I go in there 
But I'm, I, I'm always been a collector, so if I go in there, I'm going to buy something. I ain't just coming in there to get a free book. I'm going in there to see what you got besides the free books. Because to me, the free books, um, they either not giving you the whole story, and plus, you know, if you do decide you want to sell it, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if people are actually sell, selling old free books. Maybe they are. You know, maybe they're selling them on eBay and st stuff like that. <clears throat> and I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I, don't, I haven't seen nobody uh, get one of those slabs, those free books, and get a CGC slab and uh, everything like that. <clears throat> well, you know, especially a, or maybe an old one they might, but I, I haven't seen it. I wouldn't do it. Uh, but. On Comic Book Palace, he said he's not doing it. He he said he's gonna if he does it, he's gonna buy the books and donate them to the library, you know, and let the library deal with you know the free books. Which he, you know that's his opinion, and 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 because people just come in, and the reason why he said it because people come in and they just snatch the free books up and they don't buy nothing, you know, they just come in there to get the free books, and then they say and and then he said he bought some free books and. He walked down the street and the books, the free books were thrown on the ground somewhere from his shop. And and people don't realize these cats, they buy, I didn't, I didn't know that, that they buy these books to give to us, you know, the uh, public. When you come into the shop, you can just take them for free. And, and I didn't realize, you know, they were buying these books. So this is what I think the retail shop should do. And I made, and, and I said this on Arkham, you know, I made a reply or comment on, on you know, Arkham Comics that I think, you know, that the retail shops, if they do buy these books, and and and, and I would be cool with this too. If it's, if it's a free comic I want, you know, from the free comic book day, and I'm the retail shop and I'm buying these books, you would have to come in there. You can get a free comic. You can get a free comic book from the free comic book day, but you would have to buy a comic off the wall in the, in in the bins, uh, in the boxes or whatever the back issues bins, or you have to buy some off the on um, off the wall on the new uh, new wall and stuff. The new books that came in, you you buy one book, you spend five bucks or whatever on a book, and then you can get your free book. Or if you buy one book off the wall and it's two something or two dollars or something like that you get a free book i mean you they can do it how they want to you know as far as that but if you buy two books or if you buy if you spend two two ten dollars you get two free books two you know free comic book day books free comic book day books and i um i think personally if the comic book in uh comic book retailers do that not only only with that you know and <clears throat> You know, uh, bring money to their bottom line. You know, cause basically that's what it's all about. Not only bringing awareness to those books that, uh, those stories or those characters that, that the characters that are coming out from these publishers, but you also adding money back, and and uh, from what you spending those on those books, as well as they're taking stuff. You know, they're buying inventory from you, and they're just not coming in there just to snap snatch up ten books. And walk out the door, cause uh, I know Comic Book Palace. He made the comment that one uh, of the um, parents came in there with their son to get a free comic book, and the son wanted to buy another book, but the dad said, "No, nah, I just bring you in here to get these free books, and, and we're going out of here. I ain't buying no book." So, so if the son got a free book, he wouldn't have bought nothing, and so that was just. His point. That's why he said. That's one of the reasons why he said he's not gonna carry free books in there. And I, I get that because you got parents. You know they're gonna. Hey, you know comics ain't like they used to be ten, fifteen cents. And and that's a whole another story by itself. How can you survive off ten and fifteen cent books and stuff and everything? But <clears throat> and um. But I think, you know, since the com retail shops have to pay for the retail comic shops have to pay for these books. They should make it. They should add it to their bottom line. You have to. Sp if you spend ten five bucks, you get one free book, free comic book day book. If you spend ten dollars, you get two free comic book day books, and so forth and so on. And that way, you know, you you, you know, you weed out the people that's gonna come in there just to get a free book. They come in there also knowing that okay, 
If I come in there to get a free book, comic book day. These books here I see coming out, whomever they be. Like this book here before you is an Aspen book from Aspen Comics. You know, uh, this came out in May of, of uh, May 3rd, 2008. So, um, that came out in May, 2000, May 3rd, 2008 from Aspen Comics. On free, on free comic book day, this is, and this is showing some of the Aspen characters. Um, I always thought it was a cool logo, Michael Turner, and all, and uh, God rest his soul, great artist. You know, he was one of those other artists that you know I thought was, you know, I, I appreciate his art style. I wasn't into Michael Turner and his artwork, but I could appreciate what he was doing. Cause he was a you know he was in uh, in demand artist because a lot of people liked his art style and uh, um and also his you know his company and stuff and his artwork he <laughs> hey it showed itself a lot of money you know a lot of and i'm pretty sure he's getting it because you know if they're selling his his artwork at that high price he's got some fans that are buying his uh, artwork they appreciate his artwork but uh, back to the free comic book day stuff. That's my opinion. I think, you know, that's one way the comic book shops are benefiting from this. So if you're a comic book shop, if you know a comic book shop, let them know, hey, try that. Try it. You know, hey, if you're going to buy these books, in, and unless the comic book shop don't care, and you know, and they, you know, they just... And they can also, hey, you know, the subscription holders. If you're a subscription uh, holder at the comic book shop and you, you, know, you got a pull list, let's we'll say, hey, I'm going to throw, you know, you buying these X amount of books, so you're getting, you getting these X amount of uh, free comics in your pull list. And this is another one. This one's from Wizard. And this was... Uh, Was it did a, a free comic book magazine? The greatest comic book comic stories ever told. That's a great book. That's a uh, magazine from Wizard Magazine. And this is another Marvel Free. Now, I don't... I think it was a free comic book day. Let me look. Let me look. This is the Wonderful Wizard of Oz sketchbook. And I don't think this was... Ah, Iron Man's. What we did. So they were taking, you know, this is basically a Marvel free of all ages. But that's not a free comic book day, but at least I don't think it was. But this is one way of Marvel promoting a book. This would have been a great, you know, for. How the comic book is, and I mean, the whole point of me talking about the free comic book day, this is how the comic publishers are adding interest or adding value to their industry or to the industry. And this one here is Dark Horse, Star Wars. Another day, another siege. This came out in, let me look, let me look. This came out in, let me see. Let me get, uh, oh, ooh, good thing I opened that up. 
because this got <laughs> this came out oh this is sweet now the picture is showing uh 2006 20 2006 and you know they're doing something and the reason why i laugh is because i'm gonna show you the one side then i'm gonna show you the other side and then you'll see what i'm talking about because they're doing something with this character right now which i think is cool i haven't bought none of those yet but i might buy some yeah this came out in 20, um 2006 free comic book day 2006 special may may 2006 this is and i'm gonna keep it out of the plastic you got star wars 2006 dark dark horse 20 years at that time in 2006 lucas uh books like lucas film these are lucas books now on the back you'll see what i'm talking about this is conan from dark horse and and, and you know conan ain't got no healing power like wolverine even though he's a tough you know hombre he you fight conan you better come with it But they they showing him having three arrows in him. So this is a uh, uh, this is how the comic industry, and I can see. Why the comic publishers charge, but I I can see why, but I'm gonna show you some more since this is coming up. I think I I'll show you what I got in here. Show you what I got in here because I got some of the other ones. And this is the X Men. This came out in um, 50. And and as you can see, this is Greg Land artwork. I got a bunch of books signed by him as well. He's a good artist. Let me see through there. Oh, let's tell you in the back. Greg Land is a pencil. Michael Carey is the writer. You just, you got uh. J. Liston, Inker, Justin, Bounds of Color, Joe, uh, VC Joe, whatever, you know, uh, Letter, and so, and Joe Quesada, and Dan Buckley is the pu publisher, and Joe Quesada Co 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 is the is editor in chief. Great cover. And Wolverine, boy, he was the stockiest, uh, boy, tough, tough guy. I ain't gonna say little, cause uh, next up is Brooke Trinity, broken, not Brooke, broken Trinity, and this is a top cow, which blade on the front cover. 
And uh, so that was in 2000. And when this came out? This came out in 2000. 2008, May. May two, uh, May 2008. So these are all coming out in May. This other one. Ah. Excuse me, got a motorcycle going past. In the subdivision. Um, oh, 2008 as well. Broken Trinity. And another comic, 2007. With Dan Slot Writer and Phil Jemai Pencila. Spider Man. The amazing Spider Man of all ages. Daredevil. Okay, this guy keep riding his motorcycle around. Moon Knight Saga. And I don't think this this particular book was a free comic book day book with the Moon Knight Saga I don't think so I could be wrong I had got two of those but um but inside it shows some of Moon Knight storylines some stories that he did that he was he participated in yeah and that you know, basically shows you know some of the stories that he participated in oh let me just uh And next one now this is a free comic book so those are basically though this is not a free comic book per se I forgot where for free comic book day because free comic book day logo is basically their logo that's something that was something else but it was a free book and I don't forget that uh, next one is Dark Horse Star Wars Tales, a Jedi's Weapon. This is when they did those three. Uh, this came out in May of 2002. Yeah, this is when they came out with those three episodes of. Oh, uh, episode two. And this guy keep riding his damn, excuse me, this car in front of the house. Okay, Star Wars Tale. Jet, Jet, I would have to excuse that. The next up, we have Superman, number one, which was free comic book day. You know, that in the blank area and everything like that. And I think this was, I never did, I never actually read. Even, I'm not a big Superman fan, so I didn't even read this. But I think Superman was, I think he was dying in this book. Yeah. I guess his molecules or whatnot was something. I didn't read. I know he was dying. Though. I didn't read the whole story. I didn't read none of it, per, but he was strong as ever. I 
Ah, your trip to the sun exposed you to critical levels of sterling radiation, a stellar radiation, more raw energy than your cells are able to process efficiently. And has, you know, the opt opticist has begun cell death. There can only be one outcome, even for you. All the words, you got too much sun. June of eight. Free comic book. And here we have. This is not a free comic book day neither. This is one of those other ones. Marvel.com free. It's a free book from Marvel. And this is X Men Second Coming Prepared. That was good. Artwork is good. Exit, and this is uh, yeah. let me see who's uh, this came out in 2010. Pencil Stewart Aman and Money, and Mike Carey is the writer. Inks Mike Michael Lookman, anyway, and colors Justin Ponser. All right. And then they have artwork in here with David Finch. A lot of his artwork is featured in here as well. And some other artists as well. Uh, so they basically, you know, this is not a full story. This is like, you know, like a showcasing and then it features other stuff in there. That's a free book. Now this next one is a free comic book day book. 30 Days of Night. They even made a movie off this here. Um, so the original book might be worth some money, I would think. And this is, uh, you know, a IDW book. This came out, obviously, in May. Usually... Two thousand and four. Well, it actually came out in July two thousand and four. I actually seen the movie of this too. The movie is decent. Uh, yep. IDW with the blank spot free comic book day movie. Covers okay, but it's a free comic, and um, like I say, if you came pick up one book, spend five dollars, you get this book here. If you're a subscriber, and you're in your subscription box, and if you got ten dollars worth of books, you get two free uh, comic book day books stuffed in there as well. If you got twenty dollars worth of books, you get four free comic book day books in there. And if you got fifty, I mean, if they only got, let's say, in the free comic book day, and all the publishers only gave you about the comic book retailer four or five books, then you only put what you got in there. But hey, that's my take on the free comic. Now this here is a good. Uh, the cover's okay. Artifact. By Top Cow, free comic book day book, sat first Saturday in May. First Saturday in May of 2010. And the artist, mm, writer was Ron Morris, and artist, art pages 1 through 4 and 18 to 21 is by. Stephen Saint or Saint Jake or whatever it is. Sorry, man, your 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 name has got chopped up. 
And they don't, I, I'm assuming Raw, I don't know who does the other pages. Or maybe they just got it broken down like that. Ah, I see why they got it. And then, oh, okay, I see why they, because it's two books they showcase. Okay, so the first one is Artifacts. And this one came out in 2010, July. Or May or Saturday, maybe my back. And that's the cover. And on the back, Megadel. I never got into that character. And that was a cool. This this speedster. Ah, my books are falling. Velocity. I thought oh, I was a cool character. He just didn't do nothing with her. At least not to the point that he could have. I mean, he could have took that character to a flash level if he seen the vision in that. I think personally. Because, I mean, it's a cool character. I mean, she's a speedster, like fast girls. Uh, Velocity is going in 60 minutes, starting in May. Well, I guess they did try to do something with her, but maybe she didn't take on. And maybe they could redesign her costume. I like the costume, the green and the yellow. Maybe they could have gave off more of a full body suit like the flash has and it maybe gave her a more fuller secret identity that might have went a little better so that is my t that is uh, um how did the comic book, how are the comic book industries or publishers are adding value to their comics? But in this particular, particular case, they are showcasing a free comic book day, you know, once a year to the uh, retail shops. And if they, and like I said, what I didn't know is the retail shops have to pay for those books. The comic publishers are not giving them free to give out to the public free. Cost printing and all that costs money. So you know, I, I you know, you know, you you got to come to the fact. Okay, this costs money. Somebody got to pay for it. They got to pay for the ink, the paper, and everything like that. So nothing is free. So that's why I think the comic book shop should add that to, like if I go in there to buy a book, I have to, if I want a free comic book, even if I buy it from my daughter, son, whomever, I have to buy $5.00 worth of books or five or five dollar book then I get a free comic book if I buy ten dollars worth of product I get two free comic books and that's and so forth and so on depending on how many free comics you have in there and that's how I think they should work that and I think the retailers will add it to their bottom line as well as weeding out the people who just coming in and looking for free uh you want something for free uh no, not today unless you buy this here. You buy this here, 
then you get that for free. You buy, you know, if you go over there and buy something out of the back of your bin for X amount of dollars, you know, then if you go there and buy a twenty dollar book, you're gonna get four free comics. You know, you go in there and buy twenty dollars worth of books. You know, you're gonna get four free comics. Simple as that. I think that will work. And that will weed out the people who are just coming in there for a freebie. And then, cause if they're coming in there for a freebie, it don't matter. They ain't gonna, they ain't, they're not gonna come back there when there's no free comic books to buy anything. So that's how I would do that. I would work it just like that. Cause you know, the people who come in there and shop at your store, they're gonna buy something, you know, regardless if they are free books or not, they're gonna come back. But if you got somebody just coming in there just for some free books, that's and they're not gonna come back if you know, you know, to buy something off your shelves on a regular business normal day or regular week. No, they're not gonna come back. So you weed out those people, but but you give a benefit and plus to the people who are subscription holders, as well as the people who actually do buy comics and they're coming through and they just say, hey. Stopping your shop, what you got for sale? Hey, I'm gonna buy this here, and then uh, and you got it. You already got to sign up. You got to you buy five dollars worth of books, or you buy five. You know, spend five bucks, you get one free comic book. You know, if you buy ten dollars worth of book, you get two free comic books. You buy twenty, you get a four free comic books, and so forth. And that's how it works. That, and I guarantee you, you know, the people who are actually coming in there to buy some books. They'll be more than happy to do that, and they'll be more than happy to uh, oblige. You know, even if you don't spend five dollars, let's say you spend two dollars, three dollars, whatever. You come in and buy one book, so you get your free book. You know, you got to spend something though. You're not coming in to get a soda and walk out and with a free book, you know, or <laughs> come in there <laughs> and just grab all the free books and walk out. So I'm gonna do an unboxing. My next, I'm gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna do a, um, comics for troops. The pack that I'm gonna put together for comics for troops to showcase and to to sell rather. And one that I'm gonna donate and one I'm gonna sell. All right, I got a question of today. question of today is which of the following is not displayed within the bowels of the bat cave of the bat cave which of the following is not on display within the bowels of the bat cave a a giant joker playing card b a lifelike robin robin animated decoy C, a giant penny. D, a robot dinosaur. Which of the following is not displayed within the bowels? Which, it, which, now, now hear me now. Which of the following is not on display? Is not on display within the bowels of the bat cave? Which is, you know, inside the bat cave. A, a giant joker playing cards B a life like Robin animated decoy C a giant penny D a robot dinosaur and I'm pretty sure you already know the answer or two of them <laughs> which I'm not gonna tell you so until at the end of the video I'll tell you all right. Up next is I got a six pack of books, comics for troops. When you buy these books here, this pack here, it will be you can buy this pack of books and it will be donated to. Troop of your choice. The first book is, and basically, is this. This is a whole. This is a series. 
this is a mini series I'm gonna have this on the eBay site as well as the e-commerce site the fantastic four Vols. one of six the fantastic four Vols. and in this series you got Kirkman I mean, I mean you know they're showing the different characters from Annihilation yeah. this series came out in April of 2005 or oh, it came out in 2005 basically that that probably came out the month before this one Robert Kirkman is a writer Cliff Rathbarn is the artist Bill Crabtree is the colorist, Clem Robbins is the letterer, and Tom Brevoort is editor, Joe Quasada editor-in-chief, and Dan Buckley is the publisher, and Skip Whaley and Laser is assistant editors. And then the, in the comic itself, and I looked through all the books, I mean it has, I mean the cover in the comic itself the the artwork is different than the comic cover so I don't it doesn't actually say if the the artist who did the comic inside is the artist who did the cover and that's what I was looking at when I got this series who's actually doing the cover cause the comic cover is more detail more I mean it, it, it looks like a total different artist I mean and it probably is is a totally different artist but I personally I like the cover better than I like the inside that's just my opinion I mean the inside is too cartoonish for me and um I'll show you the inside, but I haven't read it, so I'm assuming this is maybe a good read. And I'm I'm not really planning on reading it, to be honest with you, because I'm just gonna basically sell this. And I'll show you. I mean, I mean, like you said before, art is in the eye of the beholder. So what I like and what you like is two different things. See, you probably you might you might like that artwork, but I bought the books, and I bought the books based off the cover, though, because I like the name Fantastic Four. Is it? They're showing some of the Fantastic Four vows, not all, by no means. You got, and this year they don't even show Doctor Doom. Galactus and all that other stuff. So that's number one, one of six. They show on the Fantastic Four on the front cover. You got the thing. Now, do I like the layout of that cover? Uh, somewhat, and then somewhat I don't. And I'm tell you why. Uh, I mean, I mean, to me, they could have had. Mm, the full body of the thing but to 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 appreciate the cover I guess you got to read the story just to say that you know um, I don't like where the human torch and and um, Sue Storm is close by I mean human torch could have been more of an action pose and but here they look like they're worried about something I'm pretty sure they worry about the vows, I guess. <laughs> and number two is what Annihilation. I like that cover.
And this 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 six pack will be sold as one, not individual. I'm gonna sell it as a pack. The whole series. Like I say, I I mean number three is with Super Scroll. Me riches down. Sue Storm is always they always having Sue Storm bending over with her butt in the camera position. Jim Lee done did it, some other artists done did it. You got the human torch. The thing in the background. And if you're not familiar with the Super Scroll, he has all of um, the Fantastic Four power. He mimics all their powers. He can stretch. He got, you know, the Thing's power. I don't. I think he has. If I'm not mistaken, I think he has. A, not only can he turn rocky form, but it, you know, I don't think he turns all the way rocky form. But he can, you know, like his hands and all that. But I think he, I don't know if he has the strength of thing. But he, he has their power, so. So I'm assuming he has the strength of thing. The next one is the Mole Man. I like this cover here. I like the, I like the darkness. I like the, the layout of the Mole Man. He's coming forth. Only, well, only thing I don't like about it is they don't put too much detail on the thing as well as the Fantastic Four character. The only person that's really lit up is the Human Torch, and you know, and that's kind of obvious why. So maybe I, I don't know what the artist was trying to go for here. Are they inside the cave or are they underground? You know, and the only light source they have there is the Human Torch. Maybe that's what he's trying to show. But why is the mole man in the front smiling? And you know, think about the mole man character. I mean, he controls those uh, creatures underground, a whole bunch of creatures. But do the mole man ever take a bath? <laughs> That's what I always wonder. Do he ever take a bath? Because you know he's probably dirty and funky. Um, the, the smell alone should be able to knock you out. Um, But that cover there is, I give it a, uh, I give it a C. I give it a C. Or, and and here the Super Scroll one, I give a B. I give that a B. Because he got himself encased in a, a force field. Oh, you know. Yeah, uh, you, um. Three riches in his hand, knocked out, obviously. Thing, he can't get in there. Human Torch, he can't get in there. Sue Storm can't get in. And I give that one there a B as well. You know. Each one of them is behind each character. Oh, and Sue Riches is the only one in front, and so forth. Behind the Mole Man, is behind, they're behind the Mole Man. They're behind him. They're behind him. You, you can't, the guy he's putting it all <clears throat> them behind the characters and the next up is oh god I forgot this guy's name uh, I was never a big fan of this character I, I, I'm pretty sure he's one of those you know Smart cats, but he had all them gorillas, the orangutans, the gorillas, the monkeys, and all that. And I actually, let me see what. Let me see. Let me see. 
Yeah, cause they had they had the claw. They had so many different cool characters. Let me see, let me see. I don't know if he's a mad thinker. I think he's a mad thinker. <laughs> and I didn't like I didn't like the way they did the human torch in him. The human torch, I guess. When he flamed on, he ball hit it. I think he has a mad thinker. What's the next one up? The mad thinker. After I do this showcasing, I'm gonna cut this video. I'm gonna make it into two part because right now it is going on one o'clock and I'm still and already it's already two hours. Okay, I might break this video up and um, pure power out of the show basically. Up. Now here we got uh, yeah number four or five is the Mad Thinker with the gorillas. And the last one, it has a mixture of woes and this. Hey, <laughs> like I said, this is this is gonna be a, a series that I'm gonna donate to troops. Not donate, but you know, you could buy this 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 six pack of comics for basically ten dollars, and this will be um, donated to. Or you could donate when you buy it. You can donate it for the troops, but this will be comic for troops and everything like that. And it will be in a pack with our logo on it as well and information of each book. But this cover here, I do not like. I don't know who was doing the artwork on this. Why Marvel approved this and everything like that. But you know Marvel. Hey, if I was the editor at the time, I would have told that artist, if he don't get that thing out of here, my little nephew and niece could draw this here. But, I just don't like that cover. It sucks, too. So, but, in, like I said, art is in the eye of the beholder, and in the breath line, my eyes is killing me. So, uh, So we got the Mole Man, we got Mad Thinker, we have Super Scroll, and and we got Annihilation, and so forth. And you know, this is space. Two of them are space characters, and and two of them are earthbound characters. And then you got like, a, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. Uh, a mixture. But these here will be so ass. Not mm. 
this is gonna be the I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna shoot another one to showcase some other stuff on you know because this this video is getting pretty long and I want to cut it and uh, post it and it's 12:46 p.m. and this is Saturday the 16th and I want to you know, cut it and then I'm gonna post this video and then that way. And it's a pure power comic show. And then I could, uh, unless, I don't know. I mean, I don't like because I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I, I don't know if I want to showcase those now. But let me give you the answer to that trib that one question. Before I forget. <laughs> Cause I'm looking at the the unboxing. I might do that. I might do the unboxing for another video. I'll do the unboxing for another video. Cause that's gonna uh, take some time. Uh, Cause I got over a hundred books in there, so that's why I'm I'm gonna say that for another time. Or well, fifty books in that one particular box. In one box I got a hundred. So. I'm going I'm to I'm read the question off again, and then I'm going to give you the answer. Oh, yeah, and then I'm going to show you a picture that I drew based off the picture. And then I say, once I get to 50 subscribers, I'm going to donate. I'm all, not donate, but I'm going to give that picture away. Okay. Uh, which of the following is not displayed within the bowels of the back cave? A, a joker, a giant joker playing cards. B, a lifelike Robin animated decoy. C, a giant penny. And D, a robot dinosaur. The answer is obvious. I'm going to tell you what the answer is. That's in the back cave. A giant penny. We know that's in there. A robot dinosaur. We know that's in there. A, and, and a giant joker playing cards. But the only thing that's not in there is a life-like Robin animated decoy. You know that's not in there. And, and I'm not... I'm not... Uh, per se... Batman. Nor at all fan. I mean, I like Batman. I can appreciate his, his struggle and why he became Batman and all that. But you Batman fans, I know y'all know it right off when I read it. So... I'm going to showcase this here. This is a Spider-Man picture that I drew, and I'm going to give this way, give it away when I reach 50 subscribers. And this is something that I personally drew. And, and you say, well, why is he swinging through? You know, hey, I just put the background. I was going to put a circle, but then I just say, hey, he's swinging through the city, and I just put the letters. Of Spider Man on there and everything like that, and I took it from uh, let me take this out. I'm gonna I'm take this out of the hole, yeah. Basically, it's 8 by 11 drawing, black and white drawing. Got my name on there. I don't, I don't, I don't put my logo like that anymore. I put it down on the corner low, and I'm gonna show you. Um, the actual picture that I'm still working on of the same Spider-Man that's bigger <laughs> of Ghost Rider yeah do some paint and what I use I use a brush to do the big areas but also use let me see this here is a paint pen and as you can see some of the paint this is black it's all filled with paint not ink but paint and you have to be careful with these here i bought these let me see uh these particular ones i was trying them out and these here is the paint pens and they give you, you know, 
different size tips. So you can fill them up with different colors of paint. And, and you know, instead of using a brush, you can use that pen. And then I bought these here from uh, Pro Artist Supplies. Let me see, let me, let me. Pro Artist Supplies. And it has aqua. Aqua Art Flow Brush Refillable Brush Pens. Brush set. At least you got a thing in there that, uh, that, that, see that there on your right hand side or your left hand side, whatever you're looking. You, you put your, you, um, fill it up with paint and then you put it inside those three pins that got different size tips. One of my artist friends turned me on to that. He said that's what he used. Saves himself a lot of time and everything like that. So I've been, it worked pretty good. And I've been dealing with, working with that. Hold on a second. Let me just turn this around. So when I get to 50 subscribers, I'm gonna give this away for free. I'm gonna give it away for free to whomever. And uh, that and it's that's a copy, not original. But it's a copy. I'm gonna give it away for free. And if you want to buy a copy, I have those on eBay, and I will have a link below. This one here I'm working for, working on. That's a high dollar one. That is is made out of wood I don't said it before uh, pre-treated plywood and everything like that because that's costing over th the, the person over a thousand bucks for this particular piece here so and I'm planning on having that done by next month it won't take me long once I get going all right so That's said and done. I will do the. I'm gonna save the unboxing for. I'll, I'll shoot the unboxing on a video throughout the week. So that is it for today. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you uh, want to be notified of any other videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon and tell a friend and if you have any ideas for the show just let me know in the comments below have a great day and we'll see you next time on the pure power of comics from bsn and you can check us out throughout the week and when we're doing you know uh showcases of products from sports cards to comics and like i said i will be doing some showcasing of some books throughout the week and you can check out for those videos as well and also, I'm going to do some pricing, you know, uh, on some books. Give you some price on, on what, you know, the, on certain books. I'm going to pull them out and just random books. I'm not going to try to pull out any books that every, you know, that's like the Marvel show that's coming out, the Marvel movie, or anything like that. I'm just going to pull out some random books, you know, look them up, give you some prices on what they're going on eBay, what they're going on these, you know, uh, on the Overstreet Price Guide, and what they're going on. Oh, you know, if they CGC, anything like that, you know, and just see what they're going for. And just give you some insight on that side of it. So everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.